Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to take all your pictures and put them in one place. Today we'll show you how to organize your photos. Time I as Zachtar. He's our. Oh look, he's wearing Pliny the Younger shirt. Yes, it's a local brewery. Well, from a local brewery. But you know, very famous. I think people all over the world know Pliny the Younger. Yeah, it shows yeah. up for two weeks in February. Yeah. When I first learned about it, it was March of last year. I was like, you oh, just missed it. But you had it this. It. You had it this year. Yep. Was it good? It was Everything fantastic. you would hope it to be. Triple IPA. I love that mm -hmm. stuff. This is not beer talk. This is the show where we show you how to do stuff. <laughs> That's Windows Weekly. <laughs> That's Windows Weekly. That's right. <laughs> uh, and and today we actually have something that I think everybody can get some value out of, which is organizing your photos. Yeah, so the first thing I want to hit, okay, because we have lots of different photos. I know Leo takes lots of photos. I use lots of different devices. I want to be able to get all my photos into one location, and that's really troublesome at times. But first, it's all about photo collection. Let's get all of our photos in one space. So we'll get them in one space, then we'll learn how to organize but Yeah, because what's the okay. point of organizing if you don't have you don't everything have yet? So, so where are your photos? Oh, I've, they're pretty much everywhere. Flickr? The first place I want to hit is email. Email? Because in the old days, we used to email photos back and yeah, forth. Yeah. I sent photos to my mom or back in college, messages back and forth. That's actually good because if you haven't deleted your email, you still have those old pictures. I opened up my old Yahoo account to check out what, what I could find. And there's an application called Lost Photos. It's available for Mac and Windows. The Windows version is free. The Mac version is $3. Uh, the Windows version does have a little bit of these little tricks. It says toolbar installs and things. So pay attention uh, when you're installing, but they work the same. I've used the Mac version. It, it takes a little while. It goes through your Gmail account, and it looks for all the attachments. Some of the attachments are not your photos. It could be weird stuff people put in their signature, photos others people sent you. So you, you will have to prune through those later, Well, that's right? true. So like, if, if you go to my laptop, Brian, you can see what the interface looks like. It'll run through all of your messages and you can see some of these are a lot ads. Of spam ads and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But there are some advanced settings where you can actually determine whether you want GIFs or things or smaller images not to be collected. So you do have to bother to go through them like you said, Leo. Right. But at least you have them. Now, I have over is it is it Gmail only or does it will it do that Yahoo mail that you it were did, talking about? It does Gmail, Yahoo Mail, me.com, a whole bunch of services will work with lost photos. And I think I've collected between my Gmail account and Yahoo about 1,700 images, <laughs> and they go flying by you. So right. you will see all these photos as they're coming in. They put them in a, in a uh, folder that you can later right. go through. You can yeah. go through that. So now you've got your photos from your email. So what you about Facebook? Facebook. Now, Facebook's a fantastic place. People put up all their photos on Facebook, right? And you're like, hey, well, what if I want to get that back? What if Facebook disappears in the unlikely event of that? Well, there is a program called Social Photo Download. I'm going to show what that looks like. Let's hit this here. A social photo download is a, a quick little service. You go ahead and you put in your uh, Facebook account information. You go in and log in with Facebook. And then it's showing my email address, connected networks. And then it shows all the photos you have on Facebook that you're tagged by. And then you can download them. So you can even download your old photos, your old albums, whatever you want, right from Facebook using the social photo download service which is completely free. Now, if you don't want to give them your Facebook credentials, Facebook does now have a download feature. You'll find it somewhere in the settings. And I, I tell you, it's so hard to find stuff in the settings. I'm going through here, and I don't see it off the top of my head. But I have seen it in the past. But that's going to download everything, all your Facebook activity. You'll then have to parse through it to find the photos in there. But uh, th that is a nice feature Facebook has uh, rolled out just recently, that you can download everything you've ever done on Facebook. I'll try to find where that is in the settings. I'll Tim put it in the show notes. Yeah. At twit.tv. I'll keep looking while you talk. We'll have all that stuff at <laughs> twit.tv slash kh. Then there's always the future. Like I said, I use lots of different devices. Uh, I'm still searching for cell phones. I'm always messing with phones for before you buy, using my tablet, taking photos. And I like using Dropbox camera upload. I found oh, you, it. You found it. Yeah, it's, boy, they do bury it here. So if you go to settings, and, uh, and you wouldn't even know that this is where you need to look, but where you see your name, 
and it says edit your name. Well, if you click that, yes, you can edit your name, but right at the very bottom, it says download a copy of your Facebook data. Get a copy of what you shared on Facebook, and that will include photos, videos, wall posts, messages, even chat conversations, uh, friends information. Your friends' photos are not. This is just going to be your stuff. But I think that's probably a good idea to do periodically because you never know. Facebook has cut off. I have friends. Facebook just said, you don't have an account anymore. And you have no recourse. So if you've been putting a lot of stuff on Facebook, it's a good idea to get it. And so all the stuff we're talking about is all the, the past photos we have. But for the future, because I am really lazy when it comes to uploading things to my machine. I don't sync things. I love using Dropbox's camera upload. That's a nice feature. Now, Dropbox has been around for a very long time. Yeah. And they have a new, somewhat of a new service called Camera Upload. It runs on iOS, Android, the Mac client, the Windows client. When it detects photos off of media, it'll automatically upload to your Dropbox, including your videos. So it's, I think, an incredibly useful service, especially if you've got multiple devices. You can set it up so that every time you plug a camera into your computer, it automatically downloads everything to a special folder on your Dropbox. And you can set it up, as you said, on all your portable devices. So it's like PhotoStream on the uh, iOS device, where every time you take a picture, it automatically goes to a Dropbox. The only disadvantage is, after five gigabytes, you got to pay for storage on Dropbox. And I don't know about you, but I take a lot of pictures. I'm going to be putting a lot of data on Dropbox if I do that. Yeah, for, for me, for the most part, I will have Dropbox take, take it the, out. And I'll keep taking yeah. I have to actually do the curation myself right. or pay for more, uh, more storage. But Dropbox is really reliable. And there's a backup version on the cloud, so you're not worried about losing it. Isn't that phone. a nice feature? Yeah, so everything you've taken will be saved if you don't take it out of the Dropbox. And so for the future, though, what about when people are tagging Facebook photos of you or Instagram photos and they're of you? This is when you can bring back if. Now, we talked about if in a previous episode. If this, then that. Right. And there are, if .com. there are a couple of recipes out there. That's what if calls their if, then, then that statements. that are called recipes. Uh, we'll have a link to these. If every time you are tagged on a Facebook image, it can be sent to your Dropbox. Ah. Or you can also work with That's Instagram. That's cool. So, so when anytime, if I'm taking a picture of Leo and Leo has this going, he'll be able to get that photo automatically. As long as somebody tags it using the Facebook or Instagram tagging feature so that, that, that those, those programs know that it's you, then your Dropbox. So they're not even your own photos. They could be that my photos. That is so cool. I'll you. take a picture of Ayaz. I do this all the time while he's not looking. This is constantly happening. Take a picture of him and post it on Facebook with a tag, and you would get it in your Dropbox automatically. Right, so now we have these things on Dropbox. We have them in this, this one location. Love that. And now we've got really good ways to have all of our stuff constantly going to our Dropbox or another place. But you know you you've created a monster. You now have thousands of photos and completely unorganized. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the old school way of organization. I know people will live and die by the file format structure. They will, they'll will they make their own folders, and they'll have the dates uh. on them. I know Carson, our producer, does that. Really? I used to do that. I used to have my own folders before file management software yeah. was really free and cheap. Now, my big pick, it's really simple. I love using Picasa as my photo manager. I'm running it right now. And one of my favorite things about Picasa, cross-platform, and it's free. So, and Google bought it a long time ago. Picasso is available for Windows and Mac, and it will import all your photos. It will uh, organize them for you. You can tag faces if you wanted to on this. I know a lot of people think Picasso is just Google Plus now, but it's still an old school piece of software if you want to run it. So let's see, we've got my, my photos up here. Now, one of the cool features about Picasso that I love is the deduplication feature. It's an actual thing. So like, let's say you've organized all your photos. You've got them all in one location, but you have lots of copies of things. It's an experimental feature. I'm just going to look for it here. If I could spell duplication, show duplicate files. Now, I've set up on my library here, I tried to trick it. I actually have two sets of folders that do have the same things, and it did find them for me. So I can go into Picasa and delete all the duplicates if I want to. Now, again, this is on Google, so you get a certain amount of uh, gigabytes free, around seven or eight. Oh, no, no, this but is if, the software on your laptop. Oh, so. you're storing it on your laptop. Yeah, so there's, there's ah, no limit there. I was talking about Picasso Web, so if you decide you want to back it up to the web, you can do that with this software. You're it's, right, it's absolutely. It's gotten confusing with the, the names. Because yeah, and Google's merged Picasso into Google Plus now, so it's really confusing. Oh, I'm sorry, you're using the desktop software. It's a good way to organize it, but I do still like to have that backup on Picasso Web. You have that option, and like, you don't even need to sign into Google when you're using Picasso, the piece of software. Right now, I'm not signed in. Yeah. I'm not uploading anything. They will. 
Uh, well, right I now. I just <laughs> feel like, and the chat room's saying it too, you just feel like something's going on at Google that they're going to start to merge that with Google Plus, and pretty soon it's going to be online. Well, then get the old versions now. Yes, save While them. you can and use them, because software software. You have it, and you can still use it. Speaking of that, I once asked Peter Krogh, one of my favorite photographers. He's a pro and an expert. He wrote the Digital Asset Management book, and if you want to really get deep into this, the damn book is a great book. And I said, what do you use, Peter? You know, you're an expert in this. And he used something <laughs> that is no longer available called Expressions studio. Okay. Microsoft bought them, then discontinued it. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> if you look around, you can still find copies of this. And it is a way of not only organizing your photos, working with your photos, but also keeping track of them. Because if you're a photographer, you might have 100,000 or more images. They're not all going to be on your current hard drive. And that's one of the problems with Picasa Web. You need to take them, put them on backup drives, and then you need to know where they are. So Expression Studio, and I'll show you another program that'll do this, will keep track of the thumbnails. So you can say, oh, I like that picture. Where's the original? And they'll say, oh, that's on drive 24 over in the closet. And you can go get that drive, hook it up, and have access to it. That's when you've really got a lot of stuff, when you have it on multiple external drives. Now, Leo, you take pictures with something called a camera. I'm usually using I've a heard phone of that. or something. Yeah. Something that's always connected. How on earth are you getting your photos? Actually, your I'll computer? show you. Hey, uh, Alex, would you go get my camera? Or, or Carson, it's on my desk there. I, I'm going to take a few photos, and I'll show you what I do. Okay. This is... A little bit about organizing, a little bit about backup, because, and this is really particularly for when I'm out traveling around, because that's when I take the most pictures. Sometimes if I'm in a beautiful spot, I'm going to be in Italy in the fall, I'll probably take a thousand photos a day. I'll be taking a lot of photos. So thank you, Alex Gumpel, our uh, a lab flow master. So let me take a couple of beautiful images oh, you're of I, the wrong way if you're take I as images. Actar. All right. Oh, just, oh, love the camera, baby. No, well, that's, I don't know if that's uh, love exactly. Then, okay. Anyway, so I have some pictures. Now, so this will happen. Let's say I've been out in the field. I'm looking at the Parthenon. I'm taking a lot of pictures. Uh, and I've got it on my uh, memory card. Oh, my gosh. You have the, to actually put that into your machine. <laughs> What is this, a Stone Age? Yes, I'm going to stick it in my machine. Yeah, if you take it with a camera phone, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. this. But if you really use a, a, a good camera, you're going to want to be doing this. And notice, this machine has not one, but two uh, hard drives hooked up to it. Now, these are USB 3 drives. Modern computers, Windows and Mac, have USB 3. Definitely something you're going to want to do if you have it. It's so much faster. And I have two different kinds of drives. This is an SSD drive, very fast, mm -hmm. uh, that's but the it's one you smaller. Actually, is that the one you took out yeah, of the Yeah, it is the one that was in there. We showed you how to do an yeah. SSD upgrade of the MacBook Pro. So and now it goes in an external stuff. enclosure. That's about 250 gigs. I have 300 gigs free on my hard drive. So as I travel, 300 gigs is probably going to be enough for the trip. So I will put the import the photos onto here. But I will back them up onto not one, but two drives. This is a Western Digital My Passport two terabyte drive. These are getting Getting cheaper and cheaper. I bought this and I bought a special hard shell case. See, I don't want to lose a single photo. So what I'll do is, and I'll do it right now, is I'll stick the uh, the memory card in here, and that'll launch the program I use, which is called Adobe Lightroom. This is Windows or Mac. It's about 120 bucks, I think, something like that. You can use, if you're on a Mac, Aperture to do some of the same things. What this program does, which is so great, is not only does it import all your photos, and I'm going to do that in just a second, but it also catalogs them, makes thumbnails. The thumbnails are preserved in the catalog even if the photo is not available, and it will tell you you where it is if it's offline. So this so you, is a way of cataloging as well as editing your photos. So you could have a small hard drive and still be able to access later on when you attach your external? Yes, exactly. Well, that's awesome. So I'm going to import uh, these wonderful photos I just took of uh, Ayaz Akhtar. Those, those are pictures of Th me. Those are lo lovely photos. And as I import them, it's going to... So understand what's going to happen. I've got several copies now of this photo. I have one on the um, oh, SD like card. One. I got a profile picture yeah, that's now. Actually a good, that's actually a good picture. That's a rarity. There's Look a good that. picture of me. That's a good looking fella right there. Right? I don't know who that is. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> that's this one, much more like This it. one we're going to throw out. Let's just delete that. Oh, we should make that my profile Right now image. from the disc. Uh, <laughs> this one's gone too. Okay. But that one I'll keep. Oh, I like that one. I'll keep that one. So we got two good pictures here. Yeah. All right. And I might want to modify this. Lightroom is great for editing. You can import it into Photoshop. I can even make it black and white. In fact, you want to see a nice black and white version of this. I'd Let's, love to. I, I, I am a big fan of uh, Lightroom. So I'm going to go to the Develop tab in Lightroom. I think we've got our thumbnail for the episode, by the way. That's a, that's a good looking picture of you, all right? <laughs> and let's try uh, some of the black. I have some good black and white presets here. Uh, that looks pretty good. So there we go. There's the, that is your headshot from now on, Thank the Ayaz Akhtar headshot. Now, I've already got two copies because I set up Lightroom, and you can easily do this. 
to make a copy of the photo from the SD card onto the hard drive, where it is organizing it, and you can also set it up this way, and I have set it up this way, by year, month, and day. So I have folders within folders within folders. Every year has a folder. This will be in 2013. Within that will be an 03 folder for the month of March, and this is the 15th, so there'll be a folder inside 03 that says 15. So I can actually, by day, go to each picture awesome. I've taken. That's on the local hard drive, okay? So that's, now I've got a copy, and I think I'm gonna consider this the original. Mm -hmm. Now, the only problem is you often erase these and reuse them. I suggest having enough for your trip. So if you have four or five of these, you may not have to erase them. That means that you're not even, these is, this is a backup, okay? So Lightroom is obviously, it costs, it costs about a hundred bucks. It's now, worth it though. It can handle a lot of that raw format, all those fancy formats. It handles formats. all the formats. It gives you a chance to edit the files. And in terms of what we're talking about, it also lets you organize them and keep track of where they are. Now, what I'm gonna do is run a program called Chronosync. There are lots of ways to do this. This is how I like to do this. It's about a $50 program that is going to take the photos from my local hard drive and make copies, synchronize those to the two external hard drives. It'll do this quite quickly because these are very fast USB 3 drives. So now I have four copies of every photo and I'll do this every single night before I leave. Let's show you the uh, Chronosync. I'm going to choose the source which will be in my pictures. So it's Chronosync 2013. Like a, a really nice GUI version of R-Sync? It's exactly what it is. You are a smart man. This is an interface to R-Sync. And R-Sync, if you haven't used that in terminal or other things, it can be fun to use if you like messing with that <laughs> stuff, but this definitely seems worth it if you're going to be it's able to sync It's a lot faster. And now, what it, you notice, I have a folder 2013 already on my external drive. That's fine, because what it's going to do is it's just going to synchronize, only copy the changes. That's what R-Sync does as well. Right. It only copies the changes. So now it's copying those I as photos into that folder 2013. Then I'm going to run a second Chronosync and copy from the Envoy, which is the SSD drive, to the Passport. So now I will have four, not one, not two, not three, but four copies of each photo. The SD card, I may end up erasing that, mm -hmm. so we won't necessarily count that. On my local hard drive, that's where I'm going to be working with those files. I've made copies to these two external hard drives, and then when I pack my bags, this one's on my carry-on and this one's in my uh, checked bag. That way, I'm really safe. So I'll give you one final step, which I highly recommend, and that is I'm going to pick the pictures I like the best each night and upload them to a photo site. So then if everything is lost, if I'm like Life of Pi, the boat sank, I'm in a lifeboat with a tiger, at least the picture of Iaz is safe up on the servers. I use smugmug.com for that. It's a professional site, a little expensive, 140 a year, but you could also use Flickr, as we mentioned, even uh, Facebook, those are free, and upload those pictures. That way, at least... You've got those really good pictures you don't want to lose, like I has going, hmm. Those photos, I mean, photos are really important to people. And you know, you've, heard, you've heard stories of people running into burning buildings to get photo albums. Right. Do yourself a favor and use some kind of backup. Leo Solution is really great. I love using Dropbox because it's really lazy. You I could have done that. The same thing with Dropbox. Again, it's just a matter of amount of time. And, and by the way, I, Chronosync is for Mac, but Sync and Lightroom is Mac or Windows. Sync Toy would be a good choice on the Windows side. That's, That's the free tool Microsoft. from Microsoft. Power Does the Toy. same thing as Chronosync. Synchronizes the two drives. So, and both our softwares, at Picasa and Lightroom, have editing software. So if you've got a picture of Brian like I have here on my laptop, and you're, you're like, you know what, I need to change things. I'm going to add light, some light here. Look at that. You can add things. That's Picasa. This is Picasa. So yeah, it's, you know, Picasa's free, and it does a pretty good job. For most people, that's probably all you need. And you, if you want to, you want to tinker around with Picasa, you can upload things to Picasa Web, like Leah was mentioning. And there is a Facebook plugin that used to have all of these services that you could upload to, but they Google stripped that out. There is a Facebook app out there. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. That's why I like Lightroom. It works with Flickr. It works with Facebook. It works with SmugMug. You get plugins for almost any photo site, Photo Bucket, even Dropbox. And you can automatically export your photos to those sites. So you never lose a photo. I has. I think that's the best picture I've ever taken of I you. I think that is the loveliest photo I, that exists <laughs> known to men. I think the Mona Lisa is in for some competition. I mean, that's going to be hanging in museums everywhere. Well, here's the good news. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll never lose that picture. It's, I, I, I guess not, no, because it's also on this podcast, which will be available. <laughs> that's what's on TV slash KH. We have tons of show notes for every episode there. We'll, show you, we'll have links to all the things we talked about, services, the apps, uh, anything you can think about, it's up at switt.tv slash KH. You can also download episodes. If you want to just listen to audio, we've got that available. If you want to watch it in HD, we let you do that too. So we've got all of that at twit.tv slash KH. And you guys can always give us 
an email at knowhow at twit.tv or join our Google Plus community. There's over 1,900 of you in there. And it's, I'm telling you, it's running like an old school forum. People are helping each other out back and forth. And it's available at gplus.to slash twitkh. That's the easy one. Or you can just do a quick search for twitk, uh, know how on Google Plus. I'll send you this one as an extra. You can use that as your headshot when oh, you're thank you. trying to get in the movies and that kind of thing. One day. Good looking fella. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> and that wraps up for us. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Now that you know how, get out there and organize your photos. Back them up too. photos we have but for the future because I am really lazy when it comes to uploading things to my machine I don't sync things I love using Dropbox's camera upload that's a nice feature now Dropbox has been around for a very long time yeah. and they have a new somewhat of a new service called camera upload it runs on iOS Android the Mac client the Windows client when it detects photos off of media it'll automatically upload to your Dropbox including your videos so it's I think an incredibly useful service especially if you've got multiple devices. You can set it up so that every time you plug a camera into your computer, it automatically downloads everything to a special folder on your Dropbox. And you can set it up, as you said, on all your portable devices. So it's like PhotoStream on the uh, iOS device, where every time you take a picture, it automatically goes to a Dropbox. The only disadvantage is, after five gigabytes, you got to pay for storage on Dropbox. And I don't know about you, but I take a lot of pictures. I'm going to be putting a lot of data on Dropbox if I do that. Yeah, for, for me, for the most part, I will have Dropbox take, take it the, out. And I'll keep taking, yeah. I have to actually do the curation myself right. or pay for more, uh, more storage. But Dropbox is really reliable. And there's a backup version on the cloud, so you're not worried about losing it. Isn't that storage. a nice feature? Yeah, so everything you've taken will be saved if you don't take it out of the Dropbox. And so for the future, though, what about when people are tagging Facebook photos of you or Instagram photos and they're of you? This is when you can bring back IFT. Now, we talked about IFT in a previous episode. If this, then that. Right. And there are. IFT.com. There are a couple. Have a download feature. You'll find it somewhere in the settings. And I, I tell you, it's so hard to find stuff in the settings. I'm going through here and I don't see it off the top of my head, but I have seen it in the past. But that's going to download everything, all your Facebook activity. You'll then have to parse through it to find the photos in there. But uh, th that is a nice feature Facebook has uh, rolled out just recently that you can download everything you've ever done on Facebook. I'll try to find where that is in the settings. I'll Tidden put it in the away. show notes yeah. at twit.tv. I'll keep looking while you talk. We'll have all that stuff at twit.tv slash kh. <laughs> And then there's always the future. Like I said, I use lots of different devices. Uh, I'm still searching for a cell phone, so I'm always messing with phones for before you buy, using my tablet, taking photos. And I like using Dropbox camera upload. I found oh, it. You found it. Yeah, it's, boy, they do bury it here. So you, if you go to settings, and, uh, and you wouldn't even know that this is where you need to look, but where you see your name, and it says edit your name. Well, if you click that, yes, you can edit your name. But right at the very bottom, it says download a copy of your Facebook data. Get a copy of what you shared on Facebook, and that will include photos, videos, wall posts, messages, even chat conversations, uh, friends' information. Your friends' photos are not. This is just going to be your stuff. But I think that's probably a good idea to do periodically because you never know. Facebook has cut off. I have friends. Facebook just said, you don't have an account anymore. And you have no recourse. So if you've been putting a lot of stuff on Facebook, it's a good idea to get it. And so all the stuff we're talking about is all the, the packed. So you do have to bother to go through them, like you said, Leo. Right. But at least you have them. Now, I have is it is it Gmail only, or does it will it do that Yahoo Mail that you it were did, talking about? It does Gmail, Yahoo Mail, me.com, a whole bunch of services will work with lost photos. And I think I've collected between my Gmail account and Yahoo about 1,700 images, <laughs> and they go flying by you. So right. you will see all these photos as they're coming in. They put them in a, in a uh, folder that you can later right. go through. You can yeah. go through that. So now you've got your photos from your emails. So what get, about Facebook? Facebook. Now, Facebook's a fantastic place. People put up all their photos on Facebook, right? And you're like, hey, well, what if I want to get that back? What if Facebook disappears in the unlikely event of that? Well, there is a program called Social Photo Download. I'm going to show what that looks like. Let's hit this here. A social photo download is a, a quick little service. You go ahead and you put in your uh, Facebook account information. You go in and log in with Facebook. And then it's showing my email address, connected networks. And then it shows all the photos you have on Facebook that you're tagged by. And then you can download them. So you can even download your old photos, your old albums, whatever you want right from Facebook using the social photo download service, which is completely free. Now, if you don't want to give them your Facebook credentials, Facebook does now. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. 
This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to take all your pictures and put them in one place. Today we'll show you how to organize your photos. Time I as Actar. He's our. Oh look, he's wearing Pliny the Younger shirt. Yes, it's a local brewery. Well, from a local brewery. But you know, very famous. I think people all over the world know Pliny the Younger. Yeah, it shows yeah. up for two weeks in February. Yeah. When I first learned about it, it was March of last year. I was like, you oh, just missed it. But you had it this. You had it this year. Yep. Was it good? It was Everything fantastic. you would hope it to be. Triple IPA. I love that mm -hmm. stuff. This is not beer talk. This is the show where we show you how to do stuff. <laughs> That's Windows Weekly. <laughs> That's Windows Weekly. That's right. <laughs> uh, and and today we actually have something that I think everybody can get some value out of, which is organizing your photos yeah so the first thing i want to hit okay because we have lots of different photos i know leo takes lots of photos i use lots of different devices i want to be able to get all my photos into one location and that's really troublesome at times but first it's all about photo collection let's get all of our photos in one space so we'll get them in one space then we'll learn how to organize but yeah because what's the okay. point of organizing if you don't have you don't everything have yet so so where are your photos oh I've, they're pretty much everywhere Flickr. the first place i want to hit is email Email. Because in the old days, we used to email photos back and yeah, forth. Yeah. I sent photos to my mom or back in college, messages back and forth. That's actually good because if you haven't deleted your email, you still have those old pictures. I opened up my old Yahoo account to check out what, what I could find. And there's an application called Lost Photos. It's available for Mac and Windows. The Windows version is free. The Mac version is $3. Uh, the Windows version does have a little bit of these little tricks. It says toolbar installs and things. So pay attention uh, when you're installing, but they work the same. I've used the Mac version. It, it takes a little while. It goes through your Gmail account, and it looks for all the attachments. Some of the attachments are not your photos. It could be weird stuff people put in their signature, photos others people sent you. So you, you will have to prune through those later, Boy, that's right? true. So like, if, if you go to my laptop, Brian, you can see what the interface looks like. It'll run through all of your messages and you can see some of these are a lot ads. Of spam ads yeah, and stuff yeah but there are some advanced settings where you can actually determine whether you want gifts or things or smaller images not to be collected